Hey, what's up? I am going to show you uh, a miraculous invention created my, by my buddy named Tim back in 2007. Um, after uh, being the first person, yeah, I'm going to boast about it, being the first person on earth to discover how magnets work and what magnetism truly is, as defined in my free book, by the way. I'm not selling anything, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. Right now, I'm in the third edition as published, fourth edition coming out soon. I'm going to show you something marvelous, something that nobody, including the inventor, has ever seen before with this very, very simple invention. This is also, I've been saying most of my life that simplicity is divinity. I'm going to show you a Tim's invention here, how incredibly simple it is. And no, I get no kickbacks if you buy one of his feral cells, okay? None at all. But I'm going to show you this simple invention, and um, there's no video out, like, out there like this. People want to, well, how simple is the feral cell? More simple than you could possibly imagine. About as simple as a post-it note. Um, but in the next video, I'm going to show you something that nobody on earth has ever seen before. Okay, you know what red shift and blue shift is, right? Well, we see it obviously in stars, you know, with blue shift. It's coming closer towards us, red shift is going away. We observe it in certain optical phenomena. But I'm going to show you using a magnet, red shift and blue shift, and a couple things in the next video that you've never seen before. But let's take a look at the ferro cell, how simple it is. And uh, now you can't replicate this yourself um, since the formula inside this is, well, it is ferrofluid. Is a special formula developed by the inventor, so if you try to replicate it, you're going to fail. <laughs> Let me take out the ferro cell. Let me actually push it up from underneath. Now, this is printed on a 3D printer, not the ferro cell, but this whole housing, this is nothing, nothing other than a light device to encapsulate light leaks. Now, what I have lining this, and this is just held in here loosely, you can see I can pull it out, is a string of RGB LEDs. Now, each one of these cells, these are regular hardware cells, uh, strips with uh, uh, a sticky backing. Each inside one of these is uh, three little spots, of red, green, and blue, and of course if you illuminate them all at once you'll get white light. Okay, you can see they're spaced somewhat evenly along here. I also use uh, my white light uh, LEDs right here. There are more of them. So the more, li more light you have, the more lines of uh, magnetic uh, phase shift of the coaxial. Light is an electrical circuit. Tesla said this. We didn't actually use those words, but others certainly have, but light is a coaxial circuit. And uh, light uh, is a longitudinal dielectric and transverse electrical and magnetic. Now I'm going to use in my next video here a uh, simple, you can use any magnet. This is a one inch neodymium iron boron cube magnet that's in 55 gauss, rather strong. Um, as a backing, I'm going to just use simple black. I'm going to put my magnet underneath it as contrast, but you can actually see it looking through it. Now here you can see how translucent the cell is. Now this is the expensive part of the cell. Now this is uh, Tim's invention. It has a special mixture of ferrofluid inside, and there are two are optically, you can't use sheet glass, okay, like from a hardware store. These are two optically flat pieces of glass, and inside is, uh, is uh, a few drops, less than that actually, of his special ferrofluid solution, and this is less than one micron thin. I don't know if you know how thin a micron is, but a uh, micron, can, a human hair is like a, uh, you know, as tall as a skyscraper compared to a micron as far as thickness goes. Now you can see how transparent it is here. You're going to learn about real holographic projection. Now 100% of the visible universe from the macro scale to the micro scale, to the atomic scale, is held up, propped up by magnetism, okay? The entire air and the balloon, if you will, of the entire cosmos, from atom to universe, I mean, from atoms to galaxies, all of that is magnetism. It is not uh, dielectricity. And we're going to understand things, and in the next video, you're going to see something nobody else has ever seen before, I promise you. But let's take a look at the inside of the ferro cell and how simple it is. Here I have a remote control, obviously it's dialable between red, green, and blue. You can see the different cells are illuminated here on each uh, individual uh, LED pod. We have a blue, a green, and a red. This is just like a TV remote control that's actually feeding the module to tell what to turn on. Or white turns them all on. I can actually change intensity. I can dial it up or dial it down. Um, uh, for maximum, I always keep it dialed up. You can actually change these to various oddball colors. You can flash them and strobe them, but none of that's really important as far as showing how the ferro cell works. Um, 
Now, I'm just going to drop the ferrule cell in here. Okay. I made sure I got my uh, fingerprints all off of it. Like this. I said this is printed on his 3D printer. I'm going to pop this on here. This is just a rim to block out the extra light. And I have some more of the RGB uh, LEDs over here. I'm blocking those out, obviously, uh, to stop light leaks. And underneath it, I'm going to, behind it, you can see how, what sort of transparency I have. Behind it, I'm going to put a piece of uh, black uh, tracing paper. Okay. Now, I can actually just show you this image, even though I'd want to turn the lights down. Right now, you can even see the magnetic projection. That's uh, at one pole. And uh, here is along, uh, you see either pole right there. Here you see the dielectric inertial plane. Now we're going to go to the next video. I'm going to show you something that nobody else has seen before ever as regarding this uh, sort of phenomena at this sort of scale. And then uh, we'll have some fun. Now look how simple of an invention this is. Now you're not going to see it from the camera, but you can actually, if you have the cell in your hand and you actually tilt it and look at it at an obtuse angle, you'll see nearly four inches of depth. Now the ferrofluidic layer between those two lenses is less than one micron thin. Far, 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 far thinner than a human hair. So now ask yourself, how are you getting a holographic projection which is not a true hologram, but how are you getting a holographic-like depth projection that is nearly three, four inches in depth? That's what you need to think about. That's because we're using a magnet underneath there. You're able to see magnetic fields. When I uh, discovered how magnetism works and what defines a magnet and magnetism, and I was the first person in the world to do it, yes, that is the case. If you think that's boastful, I don't care. It's a fact, and it's the way it is. I discovered the formula for it. And after in my second edition of the book, I discovered this incredible invention by Tim, uh, Tim, I won't give out his last name. You can go to ferrocell.us if you want to take a look at his invention. He's got several different sizes of it. No, I'm not getting any kickbacks. I'm not promoting any product that I have any connection to other than being a friend of the inventor and praising his uh, marvelous invention, which proves that my discovery, my, my formula... I made the discovery and then I made the formula and then I extrapolated out that magnetism can only be defined uh, as a reciprocating processional hyperboloid which must extrapolate itself out as a field pressure mediation as a hypertrochoidal uh, formation. People say, what's a hypertrochoid? Well, I say a spirograph pattern. Like, oh, okay, I understand, a spirograph pattern. And it sounds extremely complex, but it's actually very, very divinely simple. But I'm going to show you in a second on the next video, check it out, the phase shift, and you're going to see it very, very clearly, it'll be unmistakable, um, on the phase shift of the magnet, um, remember I made the seed experiments, I did seed experiments where I exposed no, uh, seeds the North Pole and seeds the South Pole, and they grew totally different, they grew at different rates, they tasted totally different, and even though the Gaussian flux density is measurable in either pole of a magnet, of course a magnet doesn't have poles, it has the opposite of counter space, which is space, and spatial radiative phenomena, i.e. the dielectric field, as Faraday called it, um, is a polarized phenomenon. It is a macrocosmic phenomenon. It's what props up 100% of the visible universe. That regardless of the fact that the Gaussian phase is identical on either pole of a magnet, what is the case is that there is a phase shift that exists at a ratio of 1 to 5. That means that uh, this is also uh, what's uh, due to electromagnetic retardation that we actually measure. It has nothing to do with space, it has to do with EM retardation that uh, Tesla and, uh, and uh, James Kirk Maxwell and uh, Steinmetz wrote about um, and Dr. Olaf D. Jefferminko, a brilliant, brilliant mathematician and scientist uh, wrote about in a very lengthy book called Electromagnetic Retardation. But the point is, is that there is a, uh, a phase shift field that surrounds a magnet not measurable in Gaussian flux. It exists at a ratio of 1 to 5. I'm going to show you that in the next video. And a ratio of 1 to 5 that you can find in nature is an egg shape. The bottom would be a ratio of 5 to the top of an egg, the pointy part being at a ratio of 1. And a magnet has a uh, EM retardative uh, uh, flux that is, uh, exists also at the same ratio of 1 to 5. So check out the next video and you're going to see something. There's been no other video like it. I made the discovery a year ago. But now that I have the larger cell, I can uh, show it to you. Uh, before I was using a much smaller cell, I can show it to you much more clearly. So take a look and uh, you'll see something that nobody else has ever seen before. Including the inventor, by the way. Okay?